Hi, it's Jan Beta, and you probably know the Commodore 128, which has a Commodore 64 basically built in uh, that is running at the moment. There is a problem with my Commodore 128. It's not nothing serious, at least I hope so. Um, the return key on the keyboard, on the regular keyboard, which is this portion, which works in Commodore 64 mode, the other keys only work in Commodore 128 mode. Uh, there is another enter key that works in Commodore 128 mode, but the return key, the regular return key, doesn't work. It doesn't respond at all. All the other keys work, as far as I've seen. Um, so it's only the one key that doesn't work. And today I wanted to take this apart again and have a look and see if I can fix that, actually. So actually quite an interesting machine. The keyboard is quite different from the Commodore 64, but it still has the original Commodore 64 keyboard, which would be this portion. And the function keys are on top here. They would be lined up here for the Commodore 64. It also has a nice um, font style on there. And the graphical pets key symbols are on the side of the keys, uh, like on the earlier Commodore 64 keyboards, which is a way more expensive process, actually, uh, to print these keys. And Commodore went to the other method of printing the symbols on top of the keys as well as the um, actual letters and numbers. So we obviously have to take this apart completely. It's just the there's like two screws in the back and three screws on the front here that we have to remove and then it's clipped together and that's kind of, um, you always risk damaging the clips each time you open it so you shouldn't open your Commodore 128 too often I guess. Oh and there's another screw in the middle here of course, sorry, keep forgetting about that. Let's see, it's usually um, use some kind of plastic spudger tool for this. Basically, I found that's the easiest way to do it. There's probably better ways to do it. Less destructive ways, I don't know. This seems to be reasonably fine. There we go. And there is a grounding strap on the keyboard in this area here, which actually makes the whole keyboard act as one big uh, RF shield, basically. There we go. There's a screw. Okay, so that was the actual keyboard connector and here's the LED connector and then we have uh, the whole top part free. Okay, so here's the keyboard part. I think I can actually leave the keyboard itself in. I'm, I think I'm just going to remove the backplate here. I have to desolder all these connectors and uh, remove all these little screws. And then I should be able to just take the PCB off and have a look at it and also have a look at the contacts on the keys which should be um, like little carbon contacts on there. I don't know what the technical term is, like uh, a silicon that has uh, carbon particles in it, so it uh, actually conducts electricity and um, closes the switches that are actually um, printed on the printed circuit board. <laughs> so I'm just going to desolder all these, which are the um, latching keys, actually, like the 40 and 80 column. This is the um, shift lock. 48 column and the DIN and the ASCII uh, character set actually, which you can switch on the Commodore 128. So these have to be desoldered. I'm just using a pair of tweezers, like these are my uh, throwaway 
tweezers basically and I'm using my soldering iron, heating up the solder and lifting these up because they are like wound around the pins on the actual keys. I actually don't even remember if I um, had this apart completely. Maybe I did. I don't know. Anyway, it looks like there's solder residue there, so maybe that was my solder residue. Might be from factory as well. Like a flux residue. Slightly darker spots there. I don't remember. I would have to re-watch my Commodore 128 restoration video. Series, actually. Series of restoration videos. One. Two. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Now for the screws. There's like approximately a million, I guess. <laughs> Hey, that's all the screws gone and this is a Mitsumi keyboard interestingly and my Commodore 128 was made in 1985. So now this should just lift out. Yay, there we go. The obvious uh, nice thing about leaving this uh, keyboard in place as it is, is that we can determine that this here is the contacts for the return key and I definitely sprayed some contact cleaner in there recently and it actually got to the PCB which is quite nice but yeah um, PCB seems to be okay I guess doesn't seem too bad actually let's just give this a slight wipe with some alcohol and uh, a microfiber cloth so I'm using some IPA and you don't want to be too harsh with these keyboards because the contacts are basically just um, carbon that's printed on the circuit board. And you don't want to rub that off too much. So I'm always trying to be pretty gentle. This is quite dirty still in spots. Maybe that was just a matter of being a bit dirty. So the contacts don't seem that bad. Let's see if they actually make contact. Okay, I've just set my multimeter to the continuity thing. And let's just see. This should go to here. Yeah, this makes very good contact. And this should go to here, to here. Yeah, so the contacts are actually fine. Um, maybe the contacts on the key itself are broken. Let's evaluate that. So this here, yeah, this should be the one in question. Let's see if that makes contact. No. It doesn't look damaged or anything. So maybe, just going to give it a bit of a wipe with some IPA. They all look pretty good, actually. So let me show you this. I hope you can see the multimeter. Um, usually what they are displaying is something like a couple of kilo ohms or a couple of hundred ohms at the most. And this displays like 37 kilo ohms. Doesn't make good contact. The others are all way less than one kilo ohm. 
resistance. So, so um, yeah, I think I, I want to replace that, actually. There's something wrong with the key. Maybe there's like a little fracture in there uh, with the actual contacts. I think if we are lucky, uh, the Commodore 64 C keys fit. I have a spare keyboard that should have some of those in there. I hope they fit. Let's see. So there we go. No, yeah, no. The plungers look kind of similar, but they are not the same. Hmm. I think the actual uh, part that is broken might actually fit. Yeah, no, but it's a different construction. It is a different construction. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Maybe, maybe one of the Amiga keys fits. So the C64 stuff is completely different. Uh, not completely different, but it's a different shape and also the contacts are shaped quite differently. So can't really use that, unfortunately. That would have been too easy, I guess. <laughs> so, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to um, try and scrape this slightly. Let's see if that helps. Let's see if that helps any. Not really. Still a couple of kilo ohms. Hmm. Now it's not conducting at all. So it seems to be just the top layer of it that's conductive actually. Yeah, so we need to we need to replace the conductive layer on there. Hmm. So scrubbing the contact didn't do any good. Actually it got worse. Um, I need to find something that I can uh, paint on there to make it uh, conductive again. I think there's like kits for uh, repairing remote controls and such that I could use. Mm. I'm going to have a look at my spares Amiga keyboard though. Maybe there's um, the same kind of plunger in there. So I might be able to just replace the whole thing. So I extracted the Y key from my Amiga keyboard and this actually looks very promising. At least the little um, conductive part seems to be the exact same shape as for the Commodore 128. So this might just fit, at least the, the rubbery uh, silicon part. Yeah, so these actually seem to be the exact same parts. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I have plenty of spares because the Amiga keyboard uh, does look even worse than the C64 spares keyboard. So. Um, I have no problem with salvaging stuff from that. So this is going to be my new return key, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to test the conductivity of this thing beforehand. Yay, that's working. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to insert this in place of the old one. So for extracting keycaps, you always want to use one of these or a slightly differently shaped one, the keycap puller. Don't go with uh, like uh, screwdrivers or anything like that. So this should be... Oh, it looks to be a bit longer, I think. Let's see, let's compare the two. No, it's the exact same part. Okay, let's invert this one from the bottom. There we go. And we have to. This is actually kind of ridiculous. Um, there's like a metal bracket I have to place again. Yeah, there we go. Okay, nice. So that should uh, fix it, actually. So we should 
probably reassemble this. Put it on there. And put back all the screws. And then solder these on again. And then we are going to be able to test the keyboard. Maybe I won't put in all the screws yet. So, some strategic screws. Okay, crossing my fingers. Just giving this some juice. Giving this some juice. Let's see. Yay! Working return key. Ha ha ha! Yay! Okay, so the, the other one still works too. Let's test the, the whole keyboard before I reassemble it. Actually, the shift lock, of course, doesn't work because um, we haven't reconnected it yet. Shift should work. Cursor, keys, spacebar. Yay, nice, okay. Commodore key, control key. Ha, ah, okay. This actually works. Yeah, fixed. Let's reassemble it. Very interesting. So I learned that you can use the Amiga uh, plungers on the Commodore 128. Uh, like the Amiga 500, that was an Amiga 500 Mitsumi keyboard, um, obviously. This also is a Mitsumi keyboard and they are compatible with each other. So in theory you could also use Amiga keys, probably, <laughs> uh, as a replacement at least for the Commodore 128. They should fit the plungers. And now for the tedious reassembly of the whole thing. Let's just disconnect it again. So I'm just going to put all the screws back in at first. I so hope they had a machine to do this at the factory. <laughs> okay, let's resolder the contacts on the latching switches, keys. So, yeah, we should have a fully functional Commodore 128 again. I hope. Okay, so the cheapo upscaler I'm using is uh, kind of crap. That's just my test setup. I have a proper one. Uh, and usually if I use this Seriously, I'm just using a CRT screen. It's just not very easy to film those and I always have to filter out the high frequency whine that the CRTs have because people keep complaining. There's actually some young people that can still hear the CRT whine. I can't hear it so I keep forgetting uh, to filter it out in the videos. So I just um, tend to use TFTs and uh, upscalers for testing the machines. I guess for testing it's fine. It's just the lag is kind of horrible on this one as well and the 
It's just the composite picture, it's not good. But the machine seems to still work, which is the main thing. Very nice. So what did I learn? Um, for one, I learned to not clean the uh, plungers, the contacts on the plungers, too um, thoroughly, because we're, you're going to rub off the um, actual conductive coating, which isn't good. This is probably what happened. I can't, as I said, I can't really remember if I cleaned the keyboard from the inside, but it sure looked clean, so probably I did. I probably got a Q-tip and uh, slightly wiped the plungers, which probably removed the conductive coating to an extent where this didn't make good contact again. And uh, the second thing I learned, which is pretty important, is that you can use um, spare Amiga 500 keyboards as uh, a parts donor for the Commodore 128. And that's pretty cool because the Amiga 500 keyboards are um, far more uh, easy to obtain, basically and uh, cheaper, and there are many, many broken ones out there, trust me. <laughs> so there's plenty of uh, spares keyboards to salvage parts from for these more valuable machines, I guess. So yeah, I guess that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you are a supporter, thank you so much. Um, if you want to support me, check out my Patreon page. Um, there's some bonus material on there and I'm also offering the same bonus material now um, if you become a member of the channel there's a little button uh, below the video on YouTube. If you don't like Patreon that's another way of supporting me if you so desire. So yeah, thanks for watching, I'm Jan Peter, see you next time, bye! And just in case you wondered, this is what my Amiga 500 spares keyboard actually looks like. Ugh, yuck.